Hey everyone, welcome to the seventh Chebcast. Today we're discussing ghosts, and we're here with Seventh Outpost. It's Hello Ghost UK. There. Hello. And so high for hentai. I'm still studying my jiggle physics, but I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, um, let's kick this off with like just a little bit about ghosts, like. Everyone knows what a ghost is, so we don't really have to go into that too much. Although we, maybe we will. But one point I find interesting about ghosts is how, as far as I'm aware, basically every culture on Earth has ghosts and spirits. Yes, I feel like it's almost gonna be there. every culture. That, yeah. At least every culture that I can think of. That's yeah, it. it's... Um, do we know what a general reason for these uh, legends and mythology in the first place is like as to why they were generated generally i have no idea maybe like magic mushrooms or something could be the uh belief that there is life after death mm. uh yeah i was That's, about to say it's like yeah. yeah a lot of people are usually just trying to uh, believe in the fact that their like loved ones usually go somewhere else after uh, after death but there's a chance that um like you know, some of the kind of like took it like a darker yeah. thought. It's like, hey, there's a chance they're actually just still lingering around. And so the people yeah. like me, yeah. uh, people of older times, or like um, native tribal, just say like uh, spirits of the ancestors, or like um, the spirits of the earth, or that kind of stuff. Not necessarily. Well, that's not sure those guys necessarily ghosts, but there is something akin to that. Um, I will say that I think it's over in uh, Ireland. I say I say in Ireland. I think this is more sort of general, but. Would you, would you guys say that uh, wind is a good cause for it? Because if you listen to like the howling of the wind and people will sort of like think you've got ghosts sort of... I mean, especially with like the wild hunt, you've got ghosts raging out and you need to stay indoors, otherwise they're going to take you off with them. Yeah, I think I so. I think spiritualism yeah. has is a better, better explanation for it. Mm. The proposition that like everything has uh, has like... A, 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 how should I say it? A, a corporeal, like thick, fleshy body, and a uh, some th some kind of a soul, and mm. yeah, they, they they propose very often. Uh, many religions and philosophies of the ancient times propose that like the subtle thing does not necessarily die with the uh, with the hard thing, and how should I say it? or the corporeal thing and you know it has to go somewhere so it either wanders the earth or something like that mm. um why exactly do we need to have this kind of belief like like because we can go into why it originated but it not only originates but it has kept on consistently throughout history hasn't it religions die and change all the time like like we've seen a lot of reformations when it comes to christianity and the bible we've seen changes with islam we've seen changes with um i i, I guess buddhism because yeah but but they differ more on um i don't want to say minute yet, but mm. kind of like they they really differ on on the on on some of the interpretations rather than the whatever experience it was that sparked them in the first place. Mm. So hence why uh, a lot of the religions propose the, the notion of, of something like a soul or something like a subtle body to a person that then either stays on the earth or goes somewhere into some kind of afterlife, you know, persists. Mm. Um, what I find kind of interesting about this, and I think like this can be a really good talking point, when it comes to death, um, there's a big fear towards it, isn't there? It's like uh, it's it's the general fear of the unknown. It's the fear of dying and that being it. Because what once you're dead, you're dead, and, it, and this can really upset people. So with the belief that once you're dead, your soul can go on into this afterlife, which is in itself this, um, only vaguely described as being pleasant and good or nice. And and opposite, you've got hell or wherever. But either you end up somewhere that, while having vague descriptions, people can fill in the blanks themselves. I mean, so, a lot of religions pre-Christianity, I think even um, Hebrew pre-conquered um, by Persians didn't really have the proposition that, like, life, afterlife was, like, split. It was just, like, 
you know you what about the greeks you go into some kind of some kind of place and it doesn't necessarily have to be good or evil i mean you look at greeks like in 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 you know hades was not really a great place per se to go to you know like or or the river Styx was not a pleasant place to go to after isn't that, after that you know isn't that like a general consensus though when it comes to that because it's like hades the place bit of a shit all hades the person pretty chill dude <laughs> I don't know if you study his story whether he was a chill dude. I mean, study his story aside from from the Disney movies, but you know. Mm. Yeah, but, my knowledge pretty much begins and ends with the Disney movies on that Greek stuff, unfortunately. Like, uh, it's with Greek stuff. I've played Smite. I've I've learned a little bit of of stuff with Greek, but I can't like. Is I feel like I feel like from what I've read, Hades, if anything, the the person is a children, the place is a shit out, and that's kind of it, it could it could be that I just have a really big like when it comes to that. I don't know why you didn't. Um, it, that doesn't matter at the moment. Um, let's return to ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but long story short, um, I would say that. Um, if I were to try to find like a reason for ghosts, yeah, I, I would honestly say that this is like some kind of um, some kind of desire to believe that the the mm, how should they say it? if the body returns to the earth, then the upper self has to go somewhere else. You know, the the soul or the mind or, or the consciousness has to go somewhere upward, etc. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So why don't we talk about some of the pros and cons of ghosts in terms of a world-building perspective? Who wants to go first? Because I've got quite a few for this. I can begin if you, you want. to start. Oh, whichever, don't mind. I've basically just got one point. Well, I have a few more points than that, but I'll begin with just this one. I think like one of yeah. the best things about ghosts is their intangibility, that they can like pass through stuff. Yeah. Perfect scouts. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And to extend on this, uh, typically, like in a lot of fantasy stuff, you'll find that when it comes to ghosts, they either need certain rituals or certain kinds of things to take them out. And for that, you'll kind of see that with uh, like your typical American horror films, where um, so and so family moves into place. Oh no, it's haunted. We need to do this to get rid of the ghost. Do this doesn't get rid of ghost. Cliffhanger for film two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In uh, like fantasy stuff, it's more in the ca in the case where oh, it's a ghost. I need to enchant my my big stick before I can beat the ghost to death and steal its ectoplasm and sell it for about five quid. Like yeah. you can't like, like with no with normal ghosts, you you need a kind of feel magical stuff to take them on because of that. Like and that can true. and that can go into like if if that kind of stuff is rare, then that can be incredibly valuable. What I would say is that ghost almost certainly represents um, something of like the upper sphere, like mind or body, or um, if we expand the definition of a ghost to like like something that's not just a dead person, but also mm. things like spirits, the the intangible, you know, things with will, if you if you if you will. Um, with some kind of like not very strong presence in the corporeal world then you you kind of understand that they need some kind of appeal to that incorporeal world in order to get rid of them in order to combat them because mm -hmm. they don't really have a presence they don't really have a body you can destroy so you need to hence why magic right yeah I feel I feel like when it comes to sort of like with with ghosts, like in a more kind of uh, defining sense of them, I feel like a ghost is everything that a person used to be. It's not. It, I feel like it's not only just the mind, but it's it's every aspect of that person. Like it's the, it's it's them. Drives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's it's everything. Like it's it's memories, it's personality, it's it's flaws, it's it's positives, mm -hmm. it's. All, all that that person is is coalesced in a singular intangible entity that that lingers in the material plane and i can't help but feel that because of that um there's 
when it comes to popular media, when it comes to ghosts, there's typically a thing that anchors them to the material world. Mm-hmm. Like, like they can be haunting people, they can be haunting places. Like, there's a thing that connects them to keep them here, that so that yeah. they cannot move on. There, there must be some kind of like manifestation of, mm. of what they're chained to. The yeah, issue yeah. is that, um, in certain interpretations. As they live on, on and on, they deteriorate and they can become nothing but but this thing, uh, like attached to a chain, like this thing in the chain. So, uh, at some point, a person that was had like uh, memories that had like drives, emotions, morality, essentially becomes this uh, proverbial spook attached mm. to to a house. Out of that attachment, that attachment becomes everything they are. Can can a metaphor for this be a dog on a chain? In a way, yeah. Uh, that is a um, very, very cruel way to treat dogs, and I think that's potentially what a dog can become. Because if... I feel like if you, if you put like a nice, normal dog on a, on, a ch- uh, on a chain and you leave it there, it will, as time goes on, because yeah. it's not got no stimulation, it's not, uh-huh. it's not being exercised, it's yeah. just, it's going to turn aggressive and it's going to turn violent. And yeah. if... And, and I think there's that aspect to it. Um, would, I guess, would another aspect be sort of like a dementia kind of thing for ghosts that linger too long? Because if they lose themselves, yeah. then, and they just yeah. become like these vengeful, uh, yeah, horrific Yeah, because violent. everything needs with time, right? Mm. So yeah, yeah. like, and literally everything, including like, you know, flesh, then why not this, you know? Did, why, why wouldn't this, you know, uh, like a corporeal ghost deteriorate with time? become more you know just a spook right i've got a question and this goes for everyone things mm-hmm. deteriorate with time what can a necromancer or a ghost or an intelligent um independent spectral entity use to maintain uh, the sanity of a ghost or to keep a ghost from going off off the rails basically hmm. um Maybe I'm like. Entirely too... No, sorry. I was just gonna say like maybe like anchors, like real world anchors, like f- objects that they had in life to like keep them anchored so they don't forget something mm. like that. Something to remind them and prevent them from. Well, well, if well, if they degrade just naturally with time, like similar to a zombie or a skeleton. I mean, I mean, it will degrade naturally with time. I would say options to keep it in a way like stimulated would be to provide it with a body to occupy including Mm -hmm. like uh letting it possess you for a little bit you know so it can kind of like experience the real world so as to feed itself with stimuli well if you feed it to it you know what if you feed it over souls that would i don't think that would be possible to feed it because then it would just become like an amalgam of of souls yeah. and it would not really be coherent mm. one thing i'd like to ask before we move too far away from the tangibility topic is there any ghost that is tangible i am not too aware the most <laughs> i can think of is the okay what's it called again the poltergeist uh, actually, not the poltergeist um this one is a little bit, uh, white. I've heard it white's also right. a bit of a association. Uh, white's yeah. like W I G T. Yeah. Oh, that I, one. I, yeah. There, there's usually an association of them being like originally a ghost, but having such enough like um spectral power that they become actually physical instead. Whites, wraiths, yeah. I have um I have got uh I think I've got revenants uh, written down here, which is basically a animated corpse returned from death to haunt the living, and this I feel like this can be done as the uh, ghost haunting its own body to come back and then spook everyone. Hmm. Maybe. So Maybe. I think that like what uh, you could you know, do. What you mean? I think it's possessing, not haunting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That one. So it's it's animating itself basically. Yeah. Um, and I think with with that one, like you can, you know, you can just get a big frying pan and smack the corpse to death, but you still have the ghost to deal with. What about like the grudge? You know the the Japanese grudge, right? Uh, Not really. 
it's like there's this weird little boy ghost with like a super scary mum ghost and like i've i've only ever seen um when it comes to that i've only ever seen that done in scary movie that you know just like takes the piss out of it oh well the, the actual movies are fucking terrifying um okay. I watched them all like at midnight when I was a teenager and like freaked myself out so bad I couldn't sleep. And uh, yeah, like, oh, do you need to tell us more about this? Oh, yeah. yeah, but basically it's like, I don't remember the exact, the exact story behind the, the, the grudge, but it's an, an actual Japanese like folk ghost story as so it got something to do with the mother and her child. Like the, like and the bloody Mary. I, I don't know. Kind of. I don't know the Bloody Mary, so I'm not sure. The Bloody but... Mary is like an urban legend of a uh, ghost slash thing that appears, I think, if you like say to the mayor, Bloody Mary, like seven times, something like that. It's, I, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And it's, it's like a bit behind you. It, um, it's something so that you do at parties with like your bunch yeah. of friends behind you and you'd all be like giggling yeah. on one. It's like, oh, he's scared. He won't do it. Pff, yeah. Yes, I will. All right, um, and, yeah. and like that's it's. I think it's quite interesting because it's kind of like a it's like a ghost that didn't actually appear, and you could call it a ghost. It's not probably it's not really a ghost, but it's like a, a if if it were you know in your world, if it were real, you know, if, if you were to 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 write that into the, into the world, it wouldn't be a ghost that stemmed from the death of somebody. It would be more of a more likely like a like a ghost that arised from an idea. That's kind of the, the thing they want to explore is like, um, what if ghosts are not human souls per se, as much as they're kind of like residue of their emotions and like, like, they're not the thing, but like a wave left after the thing, a, a, an afterthought, you know, mm, how, yeah. Uh, yeah, how let's say you, you build a house and you know, you have your, your life, you have things that mean a lot to you like your diaries etc and all of that is left in the corporeal world what if the thing that's left after you in the you know non-corporeal world is a ghost right it's kind of like a like residue it, it doesn't really think it's not really you it's not really a soul it's just like a like an afterthought and a residue as i've said yeah um about the grudge one scene i really r remember well is uh there was this guy and he could hear like thumping on his wall he's like what's this thumping kind of thing and then like fast forward a few nights later the grudge comes and like hangs him with her hair and then the little boy is like pushing his body up against the wall and it's making that thumping sound freaky shit man. oh yeah it was like a weird premonition oh. If that was me, I, I would have just like taken my headphones off and shouted, "Keep it down! I can fucking hear you!" And then put my headphones back on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I recommend you watch that movie. It's freaky. The only like the only uh, films I watched that really freaked me out uh, when I was a lot younger were, were ones with giant spiders in, <laughs> and I fucking remained terrified of them until I just got bored of that. Um, I've got something to say when it comes to ghosts, and I'm not sure because I don't think anyone's written this down. And I've just thought about it, looking at my own uh, notes. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got ghosts that are from people. All about nature spirits, like will of the wisp, uh, the spirits of dead animals, the ghosts of animals, or nature, or uh, aspects of nature, or all about like say ghosts that are the souls of inanimate objects or machines like say uh cars or computers or the machine spirit is ready yes the omni calls very them. very fun because it gives a layer of ritual and i wouldn't say religion but spiritualism to uh to engineering and it's mm. very very fun um, um i do have something to say about this basically yeah. like you could say that a ghost is based is basically like the remnants of a consciousness right and you could have like a machine consciousness mm -hmm. you can have like an animal consciousness so as long as the underlying machinery be it biological or made of metal or whatever is capable of producing a consciousness then in theory you could also have a ghost 
and something... there could be in a way levels of consciousness like animals have a different consciousness than humans plants if they would have any consciousness then then they possibly have maybe some kind of consciousness um not in the way that humans do obviously or animals it's just mm. you know different levels so different kind of presence in the subtle world so to speak honestly something yeah. i've always i've always wanted to see is a glitch like a <laughs> glitch like a, a robotic glitch just called a glitch and <laughs> it and so every time it, it's dead it's the soul of it or like its code will just uh, spreads to manifest or take over a different host oh, the power, were, um, like different copies of ai something like that yeah right? yeah and and robots are terrified of it because uh, it doesn't obey the normal laws of coding or the normal laws of physics with uh, <laughs> robotics. Kind of kind of like how when it comes to undead being undead, they don't adhere to the normal you know things with life. So that so the undead are terif- uh, So the robots are like terrified of it, like oh my god, <laughs> its code its code has fives and sevens in it. <laughs> oh well, shit. <laughs> um. <sighs> I've just realized when it comes to um a possible reason for like with ghosts and whatnot can and end with when and with like how they are would it be for world building purposes would it be out there to say that ghosts are a cognito hazard in a way what do you mean by cognito Sorry, hazard? what so if uh i think, I think uh, what you say what you're saying is cognitive hazard is that which kind of I'm I'm, remi- I'm reminding myself of like some SCP stuff where but that, it's like if, cognitive hazard yeah oh it's or, it's weird it's weird like if you know about it then you're at risk or mimetic yeah. hazard yeah it's it's like so it, so say for example that uh, you've got a haunted house the house mm-hmm. isn't haunted it's it's the more the case where people have implanted the idea that it's haunted I and mean, people go in with the idea that it's haunted and therefore the brain works to bring that idea to reality. If you go in without the idea that, that the building is haunted, you're going to see nothing. But if you go in thinking it's haunted, you're going to see stuff, and the brain will work to kind of like prove it in a way. And I can't help but think that, like, say, say you take you go back ages ago, uh, medieval around there, when it comes to the whole thing with ghosts. There's not a lot of, sti- especially out in the countryside. There's not a lot of stimulation. There are noises out at night. There's tons of noises, and. The, and when and when you're bored, like or when there's not a lot for you to do, I can't help but think that the brain does kind of work to fill in the blanks to some extent. So, and you, if you have people talking about ghosts, and you'll have people like citing ghosts, it's, it's like uh, I, I kind of kind of have it with Mothman, wherein before there was no things of Mothman, then some people come out and say that you know they float the idea that it's out there, and then other people start seeing it because they've read about it. Um... So kind of like kind of like that. I remember reading like ages ago, and I can't quote a source, but you can probably find it in the internet. Basically, there's some like scientific reasoning behind ghosts, and it went something along the lines of like we were evolved to like see faces and things in stuff that's not there. Yes. As, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like a malfunctioning of like pattern recognition, and it's also like a survival thing, like. If you see like a bush move in the corner of, of like your your eye or whatever, the the monkey that thinks oh shit there's a fucking tiger there and runs away lives, and the monkey that doesn't stays and dies. In the case that there is actually a tiger there, but there's probably not a tiger there. So like we've we're already set up evolutionary speaking to like see things that aren't really there. Mm. Yeah, it's um I've got let me just let me just quick Google it quickly. Uh... Seeing faces an object. So it's pareidolia is a psychological phenomenon that causes people to see patterns in a random stimulus. This often leads to people assigning human characteristics to objects. Hmm. Usually this is simplified to people seeing faces in objects where there isn't one. And for the pictures that they've got above it, like all of these just work. It's it, it's a little bit unsettling now because I'm just looking at thinking to myself, God damn it. Um, <laughs> can, we, can we briefly go back to like any cons for the ghosts? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I've so... got multiple. Does anyone anybody want to go first before I just splurge them all out? Uh, I've got too much, so you can go for it. Um, anyone else? Okay, I'll, I've got a few. Like, all right. For anything where you need something that's tangible, they of course come up short. Now I can't think of many reasons why you'd need a tangible minion for combat, 
but maybe for like labor or something you you can't really use ghosts for that uh, i feel like um sorry to interrupt i feel like when it uh, real quick when it comes to tangible minions especially when it comes to armies you're gonna want people you're gonna want things to prevent you from getting stabbed so they get stabbed exactly, instead of you exactly and, you, need, you need shields yeah. yeah and 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 like you see this like with total warhammer too like you have units that are specifically labeled meat shields and you use them to protect better units uh to, yeah. from from so that they can it's so that they can all do their jobs oh uh, sorry go on that's a very good point i'm glad you brought that up um what else i'm trying to think um usually they've got like some kind of like negative effect on like the the living or whatever right like they've got like an icy touch or something yes yeah it's, it's like a very cold chilling touch maybe they're no good against machines and golems and stuff like that mm. um there's a there is there is a film uh, called hellboy 2 uh golden army i think it is right there's a oh, guy yeah. in there's a guy there's a guy in that who's basically a ghost in armor or, or like a ghost in a, in a hazmat suit essentially and what he's able to do is he's able to use his ghost to possess dead and living on inanimate things to control them and he does this with the with a dead fairy to interrogate it and he does this later in the film with like a, a robot to possess it where he's then beating the shit out of everything around him um it's pre pretty pretty interesting honestly um I feel like for cons when it comes when it comes to ghosts, the incorporeal. So actually getting them to do heavy manual labor is difficult. You can get a poltergeist to move things, but unless you want like a tennis ball launched through a window, I wouldn't yeah. really trust them without. Um, so yeah. there is that. But a very, I feel like a very good thing when it comes to ghosts is the ability to act as perfect spice. They can go invisible. They can go through walls. They can go anywhere that they damn well please, so yeah. long as somebody that isn't aware of them is going to detect them because a, a big a big thing like when it comes to sort of like normal undead they can be hacked yeah, yeah we, we brought this up earlier um mm. the only thing i wanted to say is that uh ghosts are made almost entirely out of a soul that has some kind of will or out of a you know will or whatever residue it is I feel like there may be issues in bringing them to heal. I feel like there may be going you know, to fight back, to kind of like like spell or, go or something like that that would be strong to bring a ghost to heal. Mm. I was I was going to mention that it's like um, if you enslave a ghost or a spectral undead, they are going to fight. Yeah. They are not going to like it. They will try yeah. and at every opportunity to resist or to exactly. yeah. undermine your efforts. Exactly. Like if you was to give them an order to go do something and you've enslaved them, they can very easily subvert that order. If you tell them to spy on someone, they can give you information that's absolutely useless. Yep. Exactly. Um, if Depends if you tell them to uh, steal something and you're not sure what it what the or like you you can only go off a description of it but you don't know what it fully is yeah, they yeah, can easily yeah, yeah. use that yeah. against yeah yeah and it's difficult to get them to work with you because as i've said uh they deteriorate over time and they are chained to the world for some reason so they are there mainly to like fulfill whatever it is they were doing right mm, so yeah. so so they're going to slowly probably slowly deteriorate or, or something like that into into just you know jumbling messes that it's difficult to command in any tangible way. Um, something that necromancers in my world will tend to do every now and again, like if need be, is they can enter contracts with uh, ghosts. And the way in which this works is if you've got like a ghost that is lingering because of some kind of issue, um, and they can't move on from that. Then and I feel like this can work with a lot of different settings. But a necromancer can always go to the ghost, communicate with them, and they can enter a deal wherein the necromancer will help this ghost move on, and the ghost can stay with the necromancer for a certain amount of time, maybe until the necromancer dies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in which case, after the contract ends, the ghost moves on, the necromancer is fine. I want and this think... this could this could be for a year, ten years. It could be for a lifetime. It's the ghost doesn't really need to worry about time so much. One thing I'd like to bring up with ghosts is like oftentimes they're depicted as kind of like a very reduced version of the former person like they're just like an embodiment of rage or an embodiment mm -hmm. of despair or something. These kind of ghosts are almost 
like animalistic and they would be quite easy to direct so because they're like just a an entity of like pure rage you can just kind of point them in the general direction of the enemy and they go and fuck them up sort of thing mm. yeah but but then they won't be able to, to do things like scouting etc etc that's is true what the ghosts are good for so yeah um I was I was going to say on the negative of of ghosts, they are incredibly susceptible to magic, aren't they? Like not just like enchanted. I mean, like yeah. in completely in general, like any like because they don't have anything tangible to to like root themselves in. So they mm. all just like if if something in the subtle realm, so to speak, harms them, then that's you know that's all they have. So if somebody so, was to do yeah. like an, an area of effect spell on them, yeah. you can just gone, just gone. Probably, yeah. Um, when a normal undead is destroyed, like a zombie, if you kill a zombie, they're just going to fall over. If you can destroy a skeleton, the, the bones are just going to be in a heap. Like, uh, And this goes with a lot. When it comes to spectral undead, like in Skyrim, if you were to kill like a, a, a wisp or like a wisp mother or like a, a ghost, there's going to be a pile of ectoplasm on the floor. What would happen if you destroy a ghost? What happens to that manifestation then? Is it just dead? Is it de like dead, dead, or what? What, what do you mean like again? Um, what do I? Yeah. What, what do you mean by manifestation? Um. Well, in Skyrim, they're almost physical, right? You can hit them with a sword. Yeah. 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 yeah that's that's because ghosts in Skyrim aren't exactly ghosts. It's they're more like they're more like very very I would say like 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 wraiths in a way. So like mm. things that are t t like tangible, but not very much so. It's like light tangibility things, like a wisp of cloud or something. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe let's move on to favorite depictions. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I've got I've got a few. Uh, does anybody want to go first though? Um, uh, I only have like one. You go first, Nick. For you. All right. Um, it, it, I'm not sure if there's a classification of a ghost, but the one uh undead, or is, I'm not even sure they're undead, but like one thing I really love are ring wraiths from Lord of the Rings. Those things are badass. Mm. Oh yeah. They're essentially uh kings or rulers or such warped by a ring given to them by an uh by uh, f uh a disguise of Sauron. And it basically amplifies their like either dark desires or like negative emotions, uh, and just kind of keeps them twisting them, twisting them to the point where they just kind of become this ring wraith, an un uh, a creature who just kind of follows Sauron's orders to the bitter end, and is kind of doing honestly, generally whatever. Yeah. Trying and to they don't really people. have that big of a corporeal manifestation. Like if you look at the helmet, it's just darkness inside. Um, I've got a yeah big question regarding these guys and if you guys know a lot about lord of the rings you might be able to answer it for me but i don't know too much but i can i played the game so what's up so basically like i've read that the ring wraiths are basically completely invisible and they're, they're only able to see them because they they've been put in robes or whatever right yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah why is darkness inside of them yeah why the hell has sauron removed one of the best advantages of his ring wraiths by making them visible uh i i i really want to say a few things about lord of the rings with that so cause... lord of the rings is written with a lot of understanding of symbolism because you know it's it's very soft world building there, across, therefore... across the board no no, no, yeah. no that's that's not true uh oh, the okay. reason for why a lot of things happen is because they have symbolical meaning in in lord of the rings you know the reason why you have the ring of power the ring uh the ring being a lot of things among other things the ring is um something that you you kind of like put over the finger right it's it's like an outer layer the same way soren uh gives the um ring wraiths like an outer layer in order for them to be able to uh in a way manifest in the world like he needs to give them something um some throw something over them in a way in order for them to be able to act and not just be ghosts hence why uh -huh. they need all of those you know robes they need 
you know, the, 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 uh, I believe it's called the Witch King, who rules over them, has the crown, etc. Like, they need things uh, on top of what they are in order to be able to act. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, because I always wondered, like, why has he gotten rid of one of the best advantages of his minions there? But that makes sense. Oh, yeah, ma mainly because, like, like Tolkien was really understood symbolism. Hence why the ring is what it is, and the wraiths, sorry, the ring wraiths are what they are, etc., etc. The thing that kind of got me when it comes to Lord of the Rings is, is why they the rings were done in the first place. Like, but I mean, it's I've got. I've got a lot of questions mm -hmm. as to that, and and uh, kind of like it kind of like takes away from the ghost. Topic. I won't give you as thorough an explanation as Jonathan Pajol did in his own um on his own YouTube channel. Mm. But long story short, uh, how should I say it? It's kind of like how you would um make a a blade in order to stab someone, right? Right. That same th way, you make a ring in order to consolidate your power. But he grew weaker without the ring because he became reliant on it. Right? He, mm. he just like if you if you make a a knife or a sword to stab people, you become like and and learn how to use it very efficiently. Then you become unable to let like, let's say brawl anymore. Right? Like like. You know, you focused on 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 the usage of the thing that you made, right? Even though it's it's entirely possible for you for you to to brawl, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like he um, he consolidated the power, his power, and he essentially like like the ring became his power. And it's very weird that it's like, oh well, he had the power to make it in the first place. But it's like it makes sense only if you put it onto the real world of like, okay, he made the thing to make his power more more tangible more i would say consolidated like an outer shell over himself like you would make armor like you would make uh, a sword yeah hmm. um I'm just, I'm just thinking i'm just thinking about like how the witch king died in the films and if if one like because a, a man can't kill them a woman can kill them if one of them was to trip over and fall to their death or hmm. I I don't know whether they would die from that. Um, I don't know. I mean, because always like smacking with the tree. I mean, the trees I, are alive. I I don't know. I <laughs> I don't know if if you could kill them that way, but whatever. Mm. All um, right. Should we move along from the Lord of the Rings to like other favorite ghosts? Yep. Should I should I go next? Sure, if you sure. want to. I honestly really do like the uh, Undead and Dragon's Dogma. And going on to that, I especially like the Spectral Undead uh, Dragon's Dogma. Basically, uh, you've got uh, souls. Yeah, uh, like a mass of souls or spirits of one. Like, you have different ones, uh, different colors and like different types. And of course, the, the more powerful ones will look different. But generally, uh, these will be floating blobs that you can see at night, and you can see them in the distance. You can, uh, they can perfectly see them. And when they come towards you, they separate. Like it's just a mass of souls, and they separate, going around you and like knocking you back a little bit. You can hear like childish laughter in the background, and they will pos uh, possess you in an attempt to curse you and kill you. And when they possess you, they become tangible, so you can hit them, and that's how you beat them. You wait for them to possess uh, one of your party, and or then you use magic. Yeah, or you can use magic on them. So you've got that. You've got um, like uh, other types of undead, like liches and uh, like bit, like a dark bishop and undead dragons and like. But one of the most favorite ones, and I absolutely love this, is living armor. And living armor is basically a, if I remember correctly, it's like a, a mass of souls inhabiting a big suit of armor, like a massive suit of armor. So what you do is you gotta yeah. you gotta physically destroy the armor, and then. You, you've got to use magic on the spirit itself and i absolutely love this so much because it's it's uh, the whole purpose of it is that it's like a damage check if you can kill this you can go and defeat the bosses after it but it's i really do like that because not only are you having to physically do stuff to it but you've also got to use magic to it as well you've got to go out of your way to properly destroy it and i i, I do like that, that there's also the case 
There's also the case where it really says nothing. So when it sees you, it just comes at you with this great big two-handed sword it's got with one hand, and it just yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just the, the sound of its footsteps with its rusty armor. It's mm. pretty cool. And and the more you damage it, the more the armor sort of like peels and breaks and comes off until it's just completely smashed. You yeah. can just see this glowing, like it's just a sword with with boots, uh, gauntlets, sword and shield. Nice. The only uh. The only, I would say, iteration I can really think of off the top of my head are, and it's it's relatively cool, are the poltergeists in the Stalker games. They're not exactly ghosts of living people, but they're like, um, they're basically invisible mutants in a way, which act for all intents and purposes like ghosts. They throw, um, as you, as you let's say, explore through various underground laboratories, uh, they basically pick up various um, objects and just throw them at you, you, and you don't really know where they're coming from. Uh, and they manifest themselves as kind of like swirling light in a way. But the thing that separates them from ghosts is that you can whip up a shotgun and shoot them, and they will die. Nice. Which is pretty funny. <laughs> but it's not a real ghost, but it's it's... It, 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 it suits, it suits the way. purpose, yeah. Yeah, it suits the purpose. It's pretty cool. I've got one more, but Chev, do you want to go first? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I've basically just got two. So, mm. in terms of, like, the first-person RPG kind of favorite ghost, like, as in terms of experiencing, like, what what kind of ghost that I think is really cool, I really like the, the Wraiths in Oblivion, because, first of all, they're kind of, like, see-through, but then also not. Like you can see something in them. I really like the the aesthetics of them because they're kind of like this hooded figure with like the very long arms, and I really like the sound they make when when they're fighting and when you hit them. That kind of almost like a deflated balloon or something. That kind of wheezing sound. I don't know. I just really like that. And my second favorite um, ghosts in a game is an entire faction from from the Dominions games is called Late Age Lemuria. And like, just to explain a bit of background on this so that you're, you're not completely lost on it, but basically in Dominions, the game is split into three eras. You've got the Early Age, the Middle Age, and the Late Age. And in the Early Age, there's a faction called Amor, which is kind of like the Roman Empire, but it's got some additional changes to it that makes it not quite historical. And like this Amor went on to conquer the known world and towards the end of the early age, its mages began to like delve into dark magics and this started to crumble, uh, started to crumble the faction. And what basically happened is, is by the time of the middle ages, Amor had basically opened some portal to some realm of death and like the death has just flooded in murdered every living thing in Amor. And so by the time of the Middle Ages, Amor is basically a faction of undead Romans. And they've got like skeleton uh, legionnaires and basically just like undead Romans. But a few like factions in, within Amor itself splintered off. You've got um, Scleria, which basically went halfway between living and death. They've got like a mixture of undead and living units. And there's also Pythium, which basically rejected all the necromancy entirely, and they're pretty much like the original early age faction. Coming to the ghosts, by the time of the late ages, the only thing left of Amor is the is a faction called Nemuria, which is what Scleria became. So Scleria was that one which was half living, half dead. It basically became a faction of complete ghosts and spirits and the commanders of the faction are these Lemurian sort of Roman units and they're kind of like shadows wearing Roman armor and with this faction it's kind of like a quantity over quality thing you can command like literally thousands of ghosts I've had like more than 10,000 ghosts in a game for sure and it's got a uh, sort of little basic sort of 
whitish looking ghosts or sort of like purple ones. Then you've got these more advanced sort of green ones. Then you've got all kinds of shadow units like shadow warriors, shadow dogs. And you've also got some very large, very cool looking ghost units like the Grim Reaper things and stuff like that. I think like this is just such an awesome depiction of ghosts. And that's pretty much it. That's all I've got to say on it. Um, I've I've just reminded myself of, <clears throat> of another one. Why are not an actual ghost ghost? Uh, in Halo, a lot of the vehicles of the Covenant uh, are named after sort of like Spectral and Dead. So you have like ghosts, which are small scouting vehicles. You have spirits, which are and phantoms, which are transports. You have uh, wraiths, which are tanks, and phantoms, which are basically uh, kind of like assault vehicles, I guess. Like like a mix of scout and tank. Um. But one one I really really love, and this this is a mod that you, anybody can play. It's on Minecraft one point seven point ten. There's a mod called Witch, uh, Witchery, and it introduces Spectral and Dead. And if you tame them, if you get them, and summon them and bind them to the appropriate uh, effigies and scarecrows and whatnot, you have bodyguards. You have immortal guards of inside of your base. And and the best thing that you can do with this, you take a scarecrow, you pull it in the wall behind the block so it's hidden and nobody can see it and then what you do is when somebody comes into your base uh, because they don't meet the requirements for what um, for what that scarecrow is af is looking for so it's fine with you but any anybody that comes in that's not allowed triggers it it will summon specters which will which are very hard to see and they instantly t kill anything they touch if they if they don't instantly kill it they, they deal a massive amount of damage and they ignore armor the only the only downside is that if you're not wearing necromancer's robes, uh, which means undead won't like. If you wear those robes, undead will ignore you, generally. Um, if you don't wear those robes, then they will go after you as well because they're not really too fond of, you know, being bound living to living things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like like they would just go for they would just go for okay. players. So um, we have uh, we have our um, manifest or rather representations for ghosts down. Um, I think we can move on to uh, various. Um, regional ghosts sure um so for this i believe that the best way to kind of do this would be um aside from like the coolest things we can think of is some kind of like do we know about anything local because we all come from different places i mean chips from what uh, you're from australia i'm from poland um yeah ghost is from uk so we can tell uh maybe regional stories i think that would be interesting i got one for you there's in australia there's this thing called the min min light and it's basically like it's this light that people see in like the marshes or some shit out in the outback and it like follows them it's like they'll be in yeah. like a car or whatever and look out the window and they see this like sort of ball of lightning just following them like parallel and it doesn't matter how fast they go or how slow they go it always just keeps perfect pace of them and like eventually it just fizzles out i think that's a pretty interesting one um, uh, we're uh, at our university professor of physiology I, I believe it was or professor of whatever i don't remember which one it was I basically didn't believe in in ball lightning until he saw one <laughs> like, like 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 a year ago he didn't That's believe in one funny. but ball on, the, on the on the topic of yep yeah. um on the topic of of local ghosts there are plenty of ghost stories uh around our place mainly because like we have a lot of uh a lot of castles around up and and many castles have their oh. own uh there is for example the the white lady story uh and that depends on on which castle you go to a lot of actually more than one castle has like a white lady story which appears during certain times of the day etc etc mm. um and uh there are plenty of stories around here about haunted houses. Um, so, well, I would certainly be interested in, in, in visiting one of those at some point. But either way, um, 
yeah, like like we have plenty of ghost stories. Uh, I think the 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 the, the white lady is, is a a rather um, iconic one. Mm. Let me. Is she the opposite of the woman in black? It, what? Is she the opposite of the woman in black? Uh, it would if if she were to be the opposite, uh, she would have to be a man in black. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, a man in black. <laughs> Uh, it's it's about a ghost of a woman dressed in white robes that shows herself in uh, some uh, castles and palaces. Hmm. I got worried when you said start showing herself, and I think to myself, what is she yeah. showing? Yeah. <laughs> what kind, what kind of horrifying thing? It's. <laughs> you want to see my ectoplasm? <laughs> oh well, shit. <laughs> Yeah. So allegedly, it's it's uh, it's basically women from from you know high-born women that have died tragically somehow, and mm. um, and the white robes represent uh, purity or uh, um, or some degree of like of like grief and sorrow after um, after their death. Um. Over. It's awkward because over here we have a lot of different stuff when it comes to ghost stories and, and mythology and whatnot. I mean, my mum used to be really, really into that, and uh, there's like a few haunted places I think in in around uh, where I live that some people sort of visit and go to. I can't tell you off of the top of my head, like ones like just because I, I haven't kept track of, of so many. I can tell you about like the piece of Bodmore, which is which is more quite kind of. It's 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 not really ghosts. It's just animals that have been let loose so that people can avoid paying taxes on them, um, or can avoid being fined for them. Um, but it's like we have. Uh, I feel like we have banshees in the, in the, the United Kingdom. We have like different. We do have different spec in incorporeal ones. I'm just. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, I shouldn't have to do this. I'm just gonna look up Wikipedia. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Great British Ghost. Oh, so we got one in London. We got one in Tetbury. Would should... Oh, a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of these are just in like haunting places or buildings. Yeah, which is sometimes it's interesting. Mm. England has so many, like so many freaky yes. ghost stories come from there. Yeah. What about US? Maybe you can tell us something so high. Uh, I don't know. There's not that really many ghost stories around the U.S. We pretty much, like, the most haunting experiences I even really know is just, like, stuff from horror movies. Mm -hmm. There's not really too much that really, like, haunts us or freaks us out. It's just more like... Capitalism. And that's really <laughs> your whole day. Oh, 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 oh. Going on to that, I can tell you a really fun thing when it comes to capitalism and how it's kind of like... Uh, like, you know, you know Halloween, yeah? Yeah. So, okay, so so Halloween starts in uh, Ireland. Irish people go from Ireland, and it's like you know, you know how in like the eighteen forties or fifties, like the, there was like a, an emergence of people going from Ireland to the U.S., right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was because of the of the potato famine um, that was going on, and Ireland was badly affected because that's what most people eat, because a lot of their produce was being uh, sent to England because England was strong arming them into it, um, but. So Irish people go over to America and they bring their traditions and they bring like their uh, culture with them. And then America capitalizes on Halloween, they change a few things. So it's not like just pumpkins uh, outside with faces and whatnot to scare away ghosts. Let's let's capitalize it. Let's make it this great big thing that we can, you know, like get tons of uh, movies and we can get tons yeah, of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it goes on from there. It's let, 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 let's say let, let's focus on the ghosts and not capitalism. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Capitalism oh, has made a ghost of Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> In a way. Um, so, I think we can skip over, because we have covered most of what we had prepared. I have been keeping track. Um, the only thing we haven't covered is the different types of undead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, different types of ghosts, or ghost-like undead is what I would say. Mm -hmm. So, who wants to cover that? I know IDZ had this. 
Uh, I was going to mention, so I completely forgot what it was now. But oh yes, yes, uh, I could always like mention the theory I've got like behind as to why ghosts exist. Though it is a theory, it's just like a stupid like thing. And um, something, something I could. Okay, okay, because I, I was I was talking about the different types of ghosts, um, which you have as a point, I believe. Or yeah, what I was yeah. going to mention, like when it was like different types of ghosts. You know the oh, what's that bloody thing called? Okay, you know the one where you got like the Ghost of Christmas that play, and it's like all oh, that story, and you got like the Ghost yeah. of Christmas past, present, and future. Yeah, would time traveling ghosts be a thing to mention? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, they're not time traveling ghosts, just so you know, well, per se. They're ghosts that are like tangible representations of different things. Of, of like concepts right of, of subtle in a way bodies it's the same way that uh let's say uh spirit of halloween etc is if you saw one right mm. right yeah so yeah. For, for the sake of of the you know a story they were personified to kind of you know uh explain to scrooge why he was being not a good guy I've just kind of realized something which probably says a lot about me, so I'm a little bit stupid. Um, through, like, well, you mentioned that now, like, like just now with the symbology and uh, with symbolism mm. and, and the ghosts, and you mentioned it with symbolism and ring waves. Compared to normal undead, like, I feel because I was trying, I'm trying to find the best way to say this because when it comes to ghosts, mm. a lot of, they're so awkward because a lot of them feel similar and a lot of them are sort of like, how do you go into them? Because it, it's a ghost is a ghost, like, you, this, yeah. it's very yeah. ambiguous, and I feel like, like. The way that you talk about it is a good way of sort of explaining yes. that they're not just uh, there because of like hard sort of reasons. Yeah. It's more the case where so it's like soft world building symbolism uh, there for a purpose that is not really. I wouldn't call that soft world building, but okay. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just I'm just an arsehole with that. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> But like uh, sy symbolism, stuff. Okay, actually, no, stop that. Um, symbolism, <laughs> there for the purpose of the plot, like etc., etc., etc. Compared to normal undeads and normal skeletons and normal this and that, ghosts are a lot more sort of, I guess, personal yet impersonal. Yeah, they are. How should I say it? They are um, things from like the intangible realm of ideas, thoughts, emotions, and souls with minimal manifestation in the corporeal world the warp um in a way sure <laughs> um so we have the the uh, list you wrote out of of different spectral and undead um like the banshees Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, the, the the screaming ghost. There's something I want to say for that that might not be appropriate for the video. Yeah, I... it, it may cut Cheb's monetization. Let's. You mean... <laughs> I know what you want to say, and I want yeah. to say it well. You yeah, mean my non-existent monetization. <laughs> Should we say it anyway? I mean, I've, I've got I've got to go because because food's ready. But should I just say it and then disappear? <laughs> um, sure. I can just cut it out if it's too bad. All right. Okay, so basically, uh, it's the... I, I, I can't really say that there's evidence behind this, because there's not a lot of evidence behind it. It's more oh, like this like a general... Good. It's more like a general <laughs> belief. It's more like a general sort of, like, uh, reason as to why it exists in the first place. But the general belief behind, sort of, as to why Banshees are there is parents wanted to have loud, rough, hardcore, kinky sex, and they wanted to explain... <laughs> but, and... and they explain to the kids, oh yeah, if you hear a woman screaming at night, it's it's the soul of a woman, and uh, she's going to come and get you, so you've got to stay in bed. So, <laughs> I, no, I'm, I, I know, hold on. It's, I'm doing, I'm doing a thing at the minute! God! Yeah. Yeah. Right. Goodbye, right now. <laughs> I, will, I will remember you. F thank you, just 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 cut this out, this never happened. Be be. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Write uh... it down. So I guess okay, we will. I, I will cover this for him if you're sure. okay with that. Yes. Um, so Banshee, you know, the, the screaming undead, uh, or rather the screaming wraiths, um, poltergeists, as I had brought up before. So things poltergeists usually are characterized by their ability to move physical objects through levitation. 
Yeah. Um, Willow the Wisps. So the things that are like lights in a bog that mislead people. Like Very, the Min Min. Uh, yeah, and, and like lead them into water and, and like make them drown, etc. Um, of course, it has like real interpretation that there's. Um, there are like lights in swamps mainly because there are uh, combustible gases that uh, are released due to the process of fermentation inside those swamps and they sometimes just lit up hence why you know people see lights that um, mislead them um, yeah. revenants we have brought this up you know corpse staying around or rather a person staying around through sheer will of after death and uh, usually out of there for some kind of revenge something like that um we have i have to we have brought up the whites and uh the ring wraiths but so what are shades you wrote that up so high um it's hard for me to tell because there's honestly like a wide interpretation shades are usually just like a type of undead who are just like it's like they're shadow monsters, like shadow, dark kind of creatures. It's uh, sometimes it's it's called undead. Sometimes it's kind of like more tied to shadow mm -hmm. there, There's honestly like a wide array of how they're so like actually... a thing that was given a body through dark magic, more or less. Somewhat, somewhat like that. Yeah. Um, are you guys aware of the shadow people? Uh, not really. Yes, uh, I know what you're talking about. What you're talking about is sleep paralysis, right? Yes, yep. Yeah. That is uh, a very cool thing. If you want to cover it, do it. Yeah, so basically there's this phenomenon called sleep paralysis, and it's kind of like your body is still paralyzed because it's like asleep, but you yeah, kind of yeah. half wake up, and you wake up in the point yeah, of... Like your brain has woken up, but your muscles haven't quite, yeah. you know. And you're still kind of dreaming because you can you you hallucinate stuff you've got like a, a psychosis and um a lot of people hallucinate these shadow people and generally it's like you know it's a shadowy figure standing over them or like a lot of people do actually a lot of people it's this is as old as you could uh how should it, you could trace the origin of so many monsters uh, as well as like some of the lower vampires in slavic uh, Slavic mythologies to that specifically, so it's it's a very long-standing phenomenon. Yep, and like I'm so glad that I've never experienced it because it sounds completely terrifying. And one of the things about it is, um, for some reason, because like the the breathing muscles are like either delayed and you're like freaking out, but your body is still kind of like paralyzed, so you have the sensation of not being able to breathe. And that's usually accompanied by the shadow person, like either sitting on your chest or like pressing on your chest or like strangling you or something. Cause it's like, you know, your brain is like trying to make sense of why you can't breathe. And mm -hmm. so, and that's why they say, uh, to just try to calm yourself down and never open your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, and, and the, the, in a way, medical i guess interpretation for this is like don't don't like open your eyes it's, it's like try to slow your brain down a little bit to give your body time to wake up because the reason why you need to take a breath when you can't quite uh or at least the, the theorized reason i'm not sure if it's entirely um if it's has been uh i would say shown by data by by uh by studies but long story short uh, the reason you have this is because your brain uh, already needs the, the, the more oxygen because it's more awake than the rest of your body. And then, you know, your lungs are still at this kind of like low, um, slow, slow movement mode from when you were asleep. Hence why, you know, you, you can't really take the deeper breath. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're often able to see like dark things, you know choking you or something like that yeah and i think that's what shades are so that's why we have shades in D. &D. it's inspired that by the sleep be. paralysis hallucinations yeah 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 that could be it so um i think as an ending 
Oh. Do you guys have any personal... I th Can we end here? Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, I think we're on the same wavelength here. Have you guys ever seen any ghosts or whatever? Like, I think that's a good oh, way to end I it. was about to ask that, yeah. Yeah, I thought um, so. I do have a, st a ghost story. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, believe me or not, you don't have to believe me. Or you can explain what I'm saying with, let's say, science and logic. But yeah. long story short, not long after my grandfather died, uh, I and I was a kid, so like I didn't really know what was happening or what to do. Uh, I was sitting in the on the sofa in the living room, uh, and I don't remember what I was doing. I was just sitting there, and on the uh, on the table, not far from me, there was uh, my mother's German dictionary. And I was, you know, I was sitting there that the light was on. Uh, I don't remember what it was, why I was, I was sitting there. And suddenly the light started flickering very, like very profoundly. Like th that's not, that's not like, like the, 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 the power went out. It was very much flickering. And at the same time, the, uh, the pages of, of the dictionary started turning quickly. Um, I was paralyzed with fear. So I didn't check what was on the pages. That was literally the last thing on my head, <laughs> on my mind, to to check what was in the pages. Because because people who whom I have told this have la later asked me like, why didn't you ch check the pages? It's like I was like nine, right? I was like I was paralyzed out of my mind, right then and there. Yeah. Um, so and that's that's really that's that's all that happened. Um, I think. Uh, I think that ghost, because I would assume that it was my my grandfather. I think he had stayed uh, around um, because after a while, as I just sat down, just you know, went went back to my to my room, and my parents came back as well. I heard a very like explicit uh, clinking of the metal parts of my backpack like the metal kind of um locking mechanism that that allows the backpack to keep stay closed it, it started like clinking it was very explicit and i don't know what he wanted but long story short he doesn't have me today so <laughs> all, all is well that ends well i'm not gonna try and pick apart that story with science it's kind of nice how it is <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It, like by all means like i understand that there's how should I say it? that there is probably an explanation for all of those, but it's just like, you know, it's yeah. just, it's just there, you know? Would you like to go next for you or should I say mine? You should go, you should go because I have literally nothing. Okay. So basically, um, my grandma's house was a bit weird and like, it just had a strange vibe in it. And, um, for me, my grandma's room especially was freaky like just when you were sitting in there there was like this strange sense of like discomfort and i experienced this as a kid before i heard all the weird stories and i've never heard any like i've never experienced a ghost in that house but i did experience this strange sense of discomfort but my mom has a few stories of like in my grandma's bathroom which was connected to the room she was once just doing her her hair or whatever and she felt like really hot breath on her neck that like burnt for like an entire hour afterwards uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt because my mum was later diagnosed with bipolar and she does have a psychosis so she is known to hallucinate so that could have been very early signs of that uh, bipolar kicking in my brother is autistic and he's always like had weird hallucinations and stuff and he used to say that he could see this um little boy with lumps in his head floating in the hallway and in my grandma's bedroom and so like the family sort of story or what we think was going on is that there was like this sickly boy who died in that room at some point and he was haunting the place and that's my family has has uh, please finish oh yeah 
And um, so my most profound experience in this house was just, I wanted to go and use the bathroom. I went into the hallway, it was like late at night. And I just like came up in the hallway against this like wall of fear, basically. That's how I describe it. There was like a wall of fear and I was just too afraid to go any further. So I just like went back to bed and held it until the morning. That's it. Just uh, was was that you, you just didn't want to go further or was there anything that you actually saw? I didn't see anything. I just had a sense of terror. Okay. There's um, there's plenty of ghost stories in my family. I, I don't think I should believe all of them, but um, there was, it's probably a cool story. I'm not sure if you should believe it, but long story short, um, my cousin, if you will, the son of my the son of my uncle, um, has basically been, he he lives in a pre war house, right? Like like Poland has a lot of rich history involved with the war, um, and he's been seeing a when he slept there. Um, he he for, for quite some time he's been seeing uh, a girl with kind of ring like but you know she had a normal face just like her black hair covered her her face uh at least most of it and she was dressed in a flowery skirt i believe it was smeared by blood and the point was that like she she you know she first stood at the like behind the door and he felt that there was a presence there and then she started coming closer and closer to the bed every night etc etc so the point is that, is that it's a pre-war house, and lately, as he's been doing renovations, he found a stash of weaponry uh, covered with a blood-soaked flowery skirt. And he didn't connect that it could have been the same story before I told him. So I don't think he made it up. He, made, he probably made it up, but, like, it's pretty evocative, to be honest, you know? Like yeah. a stash of like like I think it was like World War One stuff. Like yeah, this is um the real stuff. Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, um one other thing I just remembered. Um underneath the house, I don't know if well, I've never seen it in Europe, so I assume you guys don't have this, but in Australia generally the houses are up a bit off the floor. And there's like, you know, like a space under the house where you can crawl underneath. And sometimes you can store stuff in there or something. It's kind of like um, an attic. No, not an attic. Um, a basement, we but a, really have that. above ground. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I believe it's for the hot weather to like help air circulate and stuff. But um, yeah, we found a very old like wooden uh, car in that place, you know, like a 1920s kind of wooden toy car and we, we always thought oh it must be the boys oh yeah yeah maybe that's the anchor keeping him there if he is that indeed is, there. yeah that is very interesting yeah 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 cool stuff yeah it is we gotta wait for so, ghost to come back so he can share his stories yeah uh, yeah, let's let's stop recording and like then later. Sure. Yeah. So All right. We, can talk about we were just uh, going over our personal ghost experiences. If you've ever had one, let us know. Um, I'm trying to think, and a lot of the ones I'm thinking about that I've experienced, they kind of just I can sort of explain, but. Even if you can explain them, like just like something interesting. Uh, well, I've had it. We've woken up once when I was young, and and uh, my parents were. Uh, if I say my parents, my family was kind of like on holiday at the time, and I look up to the side, or like you know how you turn over in bed, yeah. And I mm-hmm. look up, and I can sort of like feel something, or, or like a kind of, or like hair sort of purring. So I look up, and I see what looks like a cat walking through a wall. Hmm. Wow. And then I think to myself, the fuck? <laughs> so, 
I thought I thought I kind of like um, rationalized it as in I was I was sort of you know I'm just I I don't need just woke up my mind's probably just sort of uh, in reboot mode. Yeah, still dreaming basically. Yeah. That type of yeah. Thing. So I get that. Um, well, I was I was thinking about it for quite a bit afterwards, and I just thought to myself, "What in the fuck did I just see?" <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty um, cool. I've had sort of my family has more sort of ghost stories when it comes to like one of the things that they've experienced. Like my grandmother, sort of, um, like she's told me multiple times about one wherein she was in the hospital for some reason, and she was talking with her nurse, and there was like a knocking at the door, and the nurse uh, was telling like her dad to just leave. And my grandmother thought there was somebody at the door, and so the nurse explained that there actually wasn't. It was the case where um, her f- her father died like some ages ago, and yet there will be knockings and things on the door, and like there will be noises and stuff like that all all around. So she's gotten used to it. And it's gone to the point where she'll just sort of like say quite loudly, like, "Oh, oh you know, just 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 go, just just I'm a bit busy, busy at the minute, and it'll just stop." Hmm. But knowing how she is, I'm not sure if uh, that was either done for the piss or if whatever. Because I think aren't old people kind of more superstitious in some areas? I believe so. Mm. Yeah. Um. So there's that. Anything else? I mean, my my dad's like more sort of spirit focused, but that's mainly because he drinks. So uh, he drinks it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, I can't. I I, I can't. But I guess there's none that really stand out. Like I can't. I can think of like different weird things with animals that's happened. But when I it comes think, to, I think that's that's a good place we can end. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that, and thank you guys for participating. Hey, thank, thank you for having us. Thank you very much.